Okay, good day students. Welcome to this subject, the contemporary world. Again, I'm Miss Novi Dibalikot, your instructor. So we are now in our lesson 8 for this subject. And our lesson is all about uh, the world of ideas and the global media culture. So in this lesson, you are expected to analyze how various media drive various forms of global integration. Explain the dynamic between local and global cultural production and compare the social impacts of different media on the process of globalization. So globalization also entails the spread of various cultures. For example, <clears throat> when a film is made in Hollywood, it is not only shown in the United States, but also in other cities across the globe. Globalization also involves the spread of ideas. For example, the notion of the rights of the LGBT community is spreading across the world and become more widely accepted. People also do travel around the globe teaching and preaching their beliefs in universities, in churches, in public forums, classrooms, or even as a guest plays a major role in the spread of culture and ideas. So the world of ideas is the transmission of ideas, meanings, and values around the world in such a way as to extend and intensify social relations. So this process is marked by the common consumption of cultures that have been diffused by the internet, popular culture, media, and international travel. So on the other hand, Mass media includes um, all forms of information communicated to large groups of people from handmade sign to an international news network. So globalization relies on media as its main conduit for the spread of global culture and ideas. So one of the scholar named Jack Lewell was then right to ask if global trade have evolved Without the flow of information on markets, prices, commodities, and more, could religion or music, poetry, film, fiction, cuisine, and fashion develop as they have without intermingling of media and culture? So mass media, therefore, includes all forms of information communicated to a large group of people from handmade sign to an international news network so there is no standard for how large the audience needs to be before communication becomes mass communication so global media culture explores the relationship between media culture and globalization it approaches past and current challenges concerning international communication explores and considers the power of media representation. So today, this television program, social media groups, books, movies, magazines, and the like have made it easier for the advocates to reach uh, larger audiences. So media is therefore a means of conveying something. So there is an intimate relationship between globalization and media which must be unraveled to further understand the contemporary world. So since media is a means of conveying something such as a channel of communication, technically speaking, uh, a person's voice is a medium. However, when commentators refer to the term media, the plural of medium, they mean about technologies of mass communications. For example, the print media, the broadcast media, and the digital media. So print media includes the books, magazines, and newspapers. Broadcast media involves radio, film, and television. Digital media like internet and mobile mass communication. And within the category of this internet uh, of digital media is the internet media. So these are the email, internet sites, social media, and internet based video and audio. So the mass communication on a global level, these allow people across the world to share and access the same information. So media globalization uh, facilitates the operations 
and a prerequisite for technological advancement. Organizations easily created while individuals are interconnected to those around the world. So these media technologies that are intended to reach a large audience by mass communication. So these media plays a key role in enhancing globalization. There is practically no globalization without media and communications. And this made media plays an important role in facilitating the culture exchange flows of information between different countries. So here is the report on the global media industry in 2021. So with a total population of 7.83 billion around the world, 5.22 billion of these have unique mobile phone users and 4.66 billion of these are internet users and 4.20 billion of these are active social media users. So this report shows that connected technology became an even more essential part of people's lives over the past year. So with social media, e-commerce, streaming content, and video games all seeing significant growth in the past 12 months. So COVID-19 also introduced a new set of challenges and opportunities. So some of the key themes to look for this year's report is the changes in how people search for information and brands, the evolving demographics of online audiences, and the rapidly growing importance of e-commerce. So global media, so this media plays an important role in the development of intercultural communication in the era of globalization. So they broadcast statements by political officials addressed to other countries or other culture. So we have this international communication, which is referred to as the study of global communication. So the communication practice that occurs across international borders, the need for international communication was due to the increasing effects and influences of globalization. So international communication is widely spread in the contemporary society due to the increasingly globalized market employees who possess the ability to effectively communicate across cultures are in high demand international communication encompasses political economic social cultural and military concerns so when we talk about international communication or communication in international relations we are really talking about the seven dimensions of the topic so these are the technology, telecommunication, cultural products, news, mail, cultural relations, and the language. So the first um, dimension of international communication is the technology. So technology is the branch of knowledge that deals with the creation in the use of technical means and their interrelations with life, society, and environment drawing upon such subjects as industrial arts, engineering, applied science, and pure science. So this technology, the application, is also the application of scientific knowledge to the practical aims of human life. So the sum of the ways in which the social, social groups provide themselves with the material objects of their civilization is what we call technology. The second dimension of international communication is the telecommunication so this telecommunication is the telegraphic or telephonic communication of audio video or digital information over a distance by means of radio waves optical signs or the others or along a transmission line so telecommunication companies examples of these are in the Philippines are the PLDT, the Globe Telecom, the cable television companies, the mobile phone companies, which use various technologies to transmit information globally. So some of the largest companies in the telecommunication sectors 
provide fixed line telephone and wireless services as well as internet data and video communication. The third dimension is the cultural products. So these cultural products are goods and services that includes the arts. So when we talk about arts, arts, these are performing arts, visual arts, architecture, heritage, conservations like museums, galleries, and libraries, the cultural industries like written media, broadcasting, film, recording, and festivals. The UNESCO has declared that these products are not like other forms of merchandise. Such a declaration has far-reaching consequences for public policy towards culture and for the treatment of these goods and services in international agreements regarding the trade and investment. That cultural products are not like other goods. It is a distinction with considerable appeal, but one that calls for significant clarification. The fourth one is the news. So this news is about um, current events. So this may be provided through many different media, like the word of mouth, printing, postal system, broadcasting, electronic communication, or through the testimonies of observers and witnesses to some events. So common topics to the news reports includes war, no? government, politics, education, health, the environment, the economy, the business, the fashion, and the internet, as well as the athletic events, quirky or unusual events, government proclamations concerning royal cer ceremonies, laws, taxes, public health, and criminals have been also dubbed news since the ancient times. The fifth dimension is the males, no? What are these? So, mails are materials such as letters and packages sent or carried in a postal system. So, we also have electronic mail or email, which is a method of exchanging messages between people using electronic devices. The sixth uh, dimension is the cultural relations. So, this cultural relation is... Uh, refers to the interventions in foreign cultural arenas with the aim of enhancing intercultural dialogue and bringing about mutual benefits connected to security, stability, and prosperity. Cultural relations are reciprocal. It is non-coercive, transnational interactions between two or more cultures, encompassing a range of activities that are conducted both by the state and non-state actors within the space of cultural and civil society. Lastly, the seventh dimension of international communication is the language. So what is this? So the language is the method of human communication. Either it is spoken or written, consisting of the use of words in a structured and conventional way. So this is also a study of the way children learn the language a system of communication used by a particular country or a community. So those are the seven dimensions of the international uh, communication. So media really plays an important role in the development of intercultural communication in the era of globalization. So they broadcast statements by political officials addressed to other countries or cultures. And depending on the choices of the, these statements, the public who receives the message reacts or creates a certain image to a particular country or a culture. So cases of recent classes in the world have caused the media to be seen as a big position based on the way of media coverage of a particular intercultural event. So this has made the media message to be more sensitive and added the need uh, for media social responsibility and journalism ethics. So today, the media seem to be more rigid, more panic stimulatory when covering developments affecting different cultures. So if there are advantages no, or positive impact on media to globalization, 
global media culture also faces uh, different challenges. So one example is the creation of a global culture. Some scholars further or further grappled with the challenges of global media culture. A lot of these early thinkers assumed that global media has the tendency to homogenize the culture. They also argued that global media spread, as global media spread, people from all over the world begin to watch, listen to, and read the same thing. Like what McLuhan used in his analysis of technology, um, examine the impact of electronic media. He was writing in 1960s and mainly analyzed the social changes brought about by the television. McLuhan discovered and declared that the television was turning the world into a global village. So by this, he meant that as more and more people sat down in front of their television set and listened to the same stories, their perception of the, about the world would contract. Another challenges is or another challenge is the phenomenon of cultural imperialism, which raises concerns in many countries where people fear that their culture gets diluted or given a backseat to the demands of large media and corporate interests in the name of globalization, where products and imagery mainly from the West, make it into the televisions and homes of the people. So the fear of many people is that if people around the world are molded into model consumers following a Western standard, then it is easier for the large companies to sell their products and know their buyers' habits and etc. So while eroding the local cultures and traditions. So there is often extensive debate as to how likely this will be, whether local cultures and traditions will exert their influence on local forms of globalizations, or if there will be more extremist backlash. In different parts of the world, many of these and other reactions are already seen. So today, cultural imperialism tends to describe uh, the United States, for example, uh, the United States' role as the cultural superpower throughout the world. American movies, for example, are generally much more successful than their foreign counterparts, not only because of their business models, but also because the concept of Hollywood has become one of the modern world mo uh, worldwide movie businesses defining traits. So, on the other hand, multinational and non-governmental uh, corporations uh, can now drive global culture. This is neither entirely good or nearly bad. On one hand, foreign cultural institutions can adopt successful American business models and corporations are largely willing to do whatever makes them the most money in a particular market, whether that means giving local people a shot of making movies or making multicultural films such as the 2008's Slumdog, Slumdog Millionaire. However, cultural imperialism has potential negative effects as well, from the spread of Western ideas of beauty to the possible decline of local culture around the world. So cultural imperialism can have a quick and devastating effects. So indeed, this lesson showed us that different media have diverse effect on globalization process. So the global mass media are seen today as playing a key role in enhancing globalization, facilitating culture exchange and multiple flows of information and image between countries through international news broadcast, television programming, new technologies, film, and music. At one point, it seemed that global television was creating also a, mo a global monoculture. Now, it seems more likely that social media will splinter culture and ideas into bubbles of people who do not interact. 
societies can never be completely prepared for the rapid changes in the system of communication. Cultural dimensions of globalization has exercised a profound impact on the whole globalization process. Although many people may individually try to keep themselves out from Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, for example, this media will continue to endanger or engender social changes. So instead of fearing these changes or entering a state of moral panic, everyone must collectively discover ways of dealing with them responsibly and ethically. So that would be all for this lesson. Have a good day, everyone.